A prayer to God in times of trouble. Psalm 43. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against all ungodly people. From those who are deceitful and unjust, deliver me, for you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you cast me off? Why must I walk around mournfully because of the oppression of the enemy? O oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling place. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with harp, O God, my God. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, you are our rock and our salvation. We come to you today to dive into your word that is eternal. Speak to us and guide us and humble us, O God. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. Hello, I'm Noelle Reed from Central Presbyterian Church in Anderson, South Carolina, and I'm very glad to be with you today. I bring you the words of encouragement for, the, for today, and I started off by reading Psalm 43, which is a prayer of lament for times of trouble to God. So I want to take a few minutes to talk about what lament is and its place in our lives as God's faithful people. As a backstory, the Presbyterian women of our church have just started a new study now, Presbyterian Women is a small group Bible study for women in the church. The study is entitled Prayers of Lament. And they want, in the, in the study, we want to look at how we reclaim lament in our lives as a practice and discipline of faith. So over the next nine months, they'll be looking at communal prayers of lament, personal prayers of lament, prayers of lament for the world and for ourselves. So today I'm giving you a little glimpse of the first lesson of the SETI. If you would like to learn more about the SETI, you can, you can contact me at the Central Presbyterian Church office in Andrews, South Carolina. Now the topic of prayers of lament is one indeed worth talking about and enlivening the conversation. A lament is simply a prayer to God grounded in Holy Scripture, to God to help coming out of our deep sense of despair and pain and suffering. It is a spiritual response to real suffering and total helplessness and utter deep despair. In fact, over the 150 Psalms in the Bible, a third or 50 or so of them are Psalms of lament. The Bible takes seriously what it means to lament out of the human condition to God. We have the book of Lamentations in the Bible. It is a look and comes out of the, the experience of God's people's despair when Jerusalem is destroyed. We also have Job who loses everything yet is faithful to God to the bitter end, not giving up, not losing faith, but calls out to God with pleas of come and help save me, let this pass. And then we have examples of our Lord Jesus Christ uttering prayers of lament. In the gospel, when he utters the prayer, Lord, let this cup pass from me, is a prayer of lament. And then we have our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uttering a prayer or psalm of lament from the cross when he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He utters the words, of Psalm 22. Now lament is not whining or a self-indulgent pity party. It is a faithful response to life in all of its brokenness and all of its sadness. It's not a response to something that we have control of, control of. When our lives are blessed, we turn to God with thanksgiving and gratitude and praise. But what happens when life goes off-road, goes rogue, 
and we had the presence of chaos and brokenness and suffering and darkness and death. We cry out in pain, don't we? The words of Psalm 130 ring in my head often. They read, out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. You see, lament gives us permission to feel what we feel and to bring it to God in whom we trust. In God's time and in God's way, God answers our plea. How long, O Lord? How long? Prayers of lament are as timeless as the ocean. They bring about change and peace and hope within us. They begin with praise of who we are praying to, the God of eternity, the God of our rock and our salvation, the God in whom we have hope, the God of creation. It establishes a relationship with God in whom we are coming in prayer. It goes on to unpack what we bring to God as our supplication, as what we need God to help us with. We state clearly what it is we want God to do. And then we have assurance that God hears our prayer through his words. And then we go on to have a prayer of, of uttering of thanksgiving that God will indeed act and that a prayer has been heard. Again, lament takes feelings of life and puts them into words for God. Before we end today, I want to reiterate or say that psalms of lament and prayers of lament are not just something of the past. They're something very much part of our present lives of faith. I'd like to leave you with a prayer of lament from author Anne Weems in her book, Psalms of Lament. She writes out of her brokenness and her despair over a loss of a family member. Hear now these words. God, have you forgotten our covenant? Have you forgotten your promise? Can't you enter my world of tears? Can't you make your home in a heart that is broken? Oh God, acknowledge that you hear my cry. Send word that you are on the way. Answer me so that, so that I can cling to some hope of your presence. For I have believed that you would come. I have trusted that you would keep your word. I will praise your name through, through my tears and continue to worship you, my hope and my life. For you are merciful and just and compassion is your name. You will be with me. You will bless and keep me. And I will live in your abundant love for all time. May God continue to bless you and keep you now and forevermore.